Your Excellency, Mr. Dennis Francis, President of the 78th Session of the General Assembly, Your Excellencies, Head of State and Government, Your Excellency, the Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, Namibia congratulates you on your brilliant election as President of the 78th Session of the General Assembly. Allow me to use this opportunity to pledge to you the commitment of Namibia to support the priorities you have set out, namely peace, prosperity, progress, and sustainability. Namibia would like to thank your predecessor, His Excellency Shapa Korosi, for steering with diligence the work of the 77th session of General Assembly. Let me state that Namibia agrees with Secretary General Antonio Guterres, who a few months ago said, quote unquote, unless we act now, the 2030 agenda will become an epitaph for a world that might have been. Therefore, the theme of this session, quote, rebuilding trust and reigniting global solidarity, accelerating action on the 2030 agenda and its sustainable development goals towards peace, progress and sustainability for all is fitting. With the onset of COVID-19, the number of people living in ex extreme poverty rose for the first time in a generation. It demonstrates that the fact at midpoint to the global goals, we face the stark reality that we will miss our goals and targets. This 78th session serves as a clarion call to reset and to work in the true spirit of partnership for better results on the ground. Indeed, the world is in a state of flux and progress, and progress is uneven. Taking cognizance of the interconnectivity between all the goals and targets, we should accelerate investments in healthcare, renewable energy, education, clean water, and sanitation. The terrifying gap between wealthy and the marginalized is not just a moral concern but also a threat to political stability and harmony. We are therefore duty bound to create an environment where prosperity is shared and is inclusive. In our collective pursuit of the 2030 agenda, Namibia looks forward with hope and optimism to the summit of the future next year as an opportunity to prioritize meaningful reforms that can reinvigorate the global goals to give impetus to the broader system-wide UN reform agenda. Namibia also welcomes UN 2.0 and a quantity of change aiming to provide the United Nations family with the cutting edge capabilities in data, digital innovation, and ex expertise in order to deliver better and effective member state support to accelerate development. Mr. President, the health of a nation is a bedrock for all developmental activities. This morning, the General Assembly will adopt a political declaration on pandemic prevention preparedness and response. Pandemics have long been formidable adversaries. 
that disproportionately wreak havoc in the socio-economic fabric of developing countries. These crises go beyond their immediate health implications, unraveling years of development pro process, progress, straining healthcare systems, and exacerbating existing socioeconomic disparities. We need to change the status quo. To do so, we must end vaccine apartheid. We need to ensure equitable access to health products. We need stronger commitments from healthy countries on technology transfer and on the removal of intellectual property barriers and on investments in manufacturing to go to enable vaccine production in the global south. Mr. President, I always say that inclusivity spells harmony and exclusivity spells, spells conflict. The continued advocacy for gender equality is a core in our collective journey towards a just and inclusive world. Therefore, advocating for gender equality is not only a matter of fairness. It is an essential step towards unlocking innovation, diversity, and social cohesion. We are indeed proud to be ranked by the World Economic Forum Global Gender Gap Report of 2023 as number eighth, number eighth country in the world for the efforts to close the gender gap. In addition, in addition to having 44% female representation in parliament, we have women in the positions of prime minister, deputy prime minister, and current deputy prime minister has been selected by the ruling party to be the candidate. And very soon after I leave, in a year's time, she may be the one to come and stand here, who is here with us. And, and two thirds of our key banking institutions are headed by women. In the same vein, we believe in promoting inclusive and effective governance that ensures that the youth are integrated into decision-making structures to play their part in the future they have helped to shape. Mr. President, rapid advances in technology, quantum computing, and artificial intelligence are transforming the global landscape, offering unprecedented challenges and opportunities for growth and development. Therefore, Developing countries should not be left behind in this digital revolution. Access to technology can bridge gaps in education, healthcare, and economic development, propelling nations towards progress. We must navigate technological challenges and harness opportunities by fostering an environment that is conducive to technology transfer, technology adoption, skills development, and collaboration. As we march towards COP28 for the final global stock take, we are acutely aware that the energy transition is not only a necessity for the combating climate change, but also an opportunity for economic development. Consistent with their pledges made at the Paris Climate Summit in 2015, Developed nations must provide financial and technological support to enable developing countries to shift to cleaner energy sources without hampering development. Three years ago, during the 78th General Assembly, Namibia boldly announced its intention to change its economic structure by leveraging innovative financial tools to mobilize sustainable climate financing to combat climate change. One year later in Glasgow, Scotland, on the margins of COP26, COP we announced the development of large-scale green hydrogen projects that will provide the world with the clean molecules needed to decarbonize hard to abate sections. Today, we have more than five such projects under development, 
looking to deploy more than 20 billion US dollars in order to develop our world-class renewable energy potential to give our future generations a fit, a fighting chance against warming climate. Mr. President, developing a new synthetic fuels industry in Namibia is not just an opportunity to fight climate change, but indeed offers an unparalleled opportunity for green industrialization. Namibia has now attracted new industries that are looking to make use of the cheap, clean electricity and molecules that shall be produced in Namibia. One such pioneering example is the Oshivala project by High Iron, which plans to use Namibian produced green hydrogen to deliver the first industrial produ production of iron at net zero emissions. During the first phase of the project in 2024, an annual output of 15,000 tons of direct reduced iron is planned. Oshivala will be one of the biggest primary production sites of green iron worldwide and is expected to sequestrate 27,000 tons of carbon dioxide emissions per year, equivalent to 50% of the carbon dioxide emissions of Namibia's entire power industry today. In order to transport the clean molecules to their final destination, shipping, which is yet another hard to abate sector, will also need to deploy innovative solutions. This is why Namibia is now developing green shipping corridors with Max McKinney Mola Center for Zero Carbon Shipping as we, as we look to map and fund the development of carbon neutral maritime value chains from production, transportation, storage, and consumption of clean fuels and carbon free products made in Namibia and traded with the world. We are working with Campaign Maritime Belge, a shipping company from Belgium, with plans to build a clean ammonia bungering facility in Wolfish Bay. At a cost of more than 2.2 billion euro, in partnership with Namibia's own Old Harbor and Lease Company. On the 28th of September 23, this partnership named Plenary is expected to reveal plans to construct their first Namibian green hydrogen multimodal service station. I always say that you do not make peace with your friends. You make peace with your enemies. Punitive measures imposed for over half a century on the Republic of Cuba have brought untold hardships that have disenfranchised the Cuban people. The embargo against the Cuban people remains unjust and must therefore be lifted. Namibia appeals to the United States of America to remo remove the Republic of Cuba from the list of state sponsors of terrorism, as there is no evidence to support such classification. Selective punitive measures against Zimbabwe and Venezuela must also be lifted, as these measures constitute the greatest obstacle to the implementation of 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. The United Nations Charter remains an important source of inspiration, reflecting the com commonality agreed upon values of diplomacy and peaceful coexistence. We regard the Charter enshrined rights to self-determination for all peoples as essential. This rings true for the people of Western Sahara. While our right to self-determination has been upheld, the people of Western Sahara continue to remain under occupation. We recall how Morocco supported our right to self-determination, and now we call on them to do the same for the people of Western Sahara. Similarly, the people of Palestine yearn to transition from the inhuman conditions of oppressive rule Namibia is therefore pleased 
with the decision of the General Assembly to submit to the International Court of Justice a request for an advisory opinion on legal consequences arising from the ongoing violation by Israel of the right of the Palestinian people to self-determination. Mr. President, the challenges we face today are not insurmountable. By holding hands and by renewing our commitment to multilateralism, we can reverse the worst effects of the unprecedented global challenges of global warming, global inequality, pandemics, and conflicts. By holding hands, we have it within us to act now and to build the world we want. In that world, no one should feel left out. I thank you.